Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back in again. I thank God for you tuning in. Hope you're doing great today. Brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about a topic that I don't think a lot of people's talking about. That's why I like this topic. I want to talk about is the environment you live in automatically give you a sinful card based on where you live in other words will you be a sinner automatically based on the environment you live in a lot of people think that just because you live in certain areas you're automatically going to be a sinner Brothers and sisters, I want to go over truths, I want to go over myths, I want to go over facts, I want to go over circumstances, and I want to go over mindset, mind state. Because I believe, brothers and sisters, that it all comes down to an individual mind state and what's in their heart will determine if they will become a sinner or not. What is sin, brothers and sisters? Let's get it simplistic. Sin is a spiritual violation against God. We live in a society where if you run the red light, that's it. You know, you get a violation from that. You commit a crime. That's a violation. You commit adultery. That's a violation against your marriage. But when you violate against Jesus Christ himself... And you commit sins deliberately knowing right from wrong. But you do it because your flesh wants to do it. You do it because you enjoy doing it. And don't repent. Then, brothers and sisters, you are walking on thin ice. So I want to talk about, brothers and sisters, why it is that some people, quote unquote, live lives, it doesn't matter where they live necessarily, but live lives of uh, integrity or live lives of meaning, if you would, as opposed to people who just live lives on the edge and just don't care, so to speak. See, brothers and sisters, let me just break it down really quickly. Okay, let me, let me get the elephant out of the room. Okay. Just because you live in a ghetto. Okay. Or just because you live in the suburbs. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good or bad individual. Case in point. And you can look this up. This is actual factual. There were three brothers. Well, actually they weren't biological brothers, but they were friends. They met in high school and they were from Newark, New Jersey. And I just happened to live in Newark, New Jersey for a period of time. I don't live there anymore. But these three brothers, while they were in high school, brothers and sisters, decided to not only complete high school and complete college, but go into medical school, despite the fact that they lived in a crime infested, drug infested environment. They held each other accountable. They were good friends. And they made a book about it. You can actually look it up. Dr. Davis, Dr. Hunt, and Dr. Jenkins. Three three brothers. If you would look at them years and years prior, many would probably think they were just local street street dudes. You know what I mean? But they are successful, black, handsome (laughs) doctors, brothers and sisters. And you can look it up. It's called thethreedoctors.com. What am I saying? I'm going to give you other circumstances. I'm going to go through celebrities. I'm going to go through people in the Bible. How is it that these people in diverse and complex and adverse circumstances become people of integrity or people of valor? How does that happen? Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of celebrities out there who were born and raised in very diverse neighborhoods, to say the least. Drug infested, gun crimes, every everything that was set the stage for 
a person committing a sin, right? But somehow they made it out. Okay? Somehow they made it out, made a choice to leave that environment. And they now live in houses that are multi-million dollar houses and things of that nature. But brothers and sisters, does that make them upstanding? Does that make them without sin? Does that make them spiritually at a place with God, where God is pleased? See, a lot of people have these misconceptions that just because a person lives in a certain environment, that they're automatically amongst not only the elite, but good people or spiritually in good standing with God. Brothers and sisters, that is so far from the truth. And I want you to just take a while to think about this on a simplistic level. Jesus Christ himself was not raised, even though he was given when he was born gold and things of that nature, gifts. He wasn't necessarily a rich man per se, monetarily. Okay. Moses even though Moses was raised, okay, in a very rich and lavish environment, he decided when he knew and came to the fact that he knew who he was, Hebrew, he decided to stand up for his people, I love Moses, and be a renegade and do exactly what he needed to do for God. Now, think about Joseph. Joseph was very chosen he was blessed by his parents he had dreams and he did great things for God but he was in the midst of adversity he was betrayed by his brothers but he was blessed because he was known to not only interpret dreams, but the way he worked, he worked very diligently and he stood out in the crowd. What am I saying? I'm talking about Gideon also and Job. There's a lot of people, brothers and sisters, on and on in the Bible who are or were up against diverse, complex, and ever situations, poor upbringings, but yet they're great people. I want that to permeate and radiate. Brothers and sisters, you look at celebrities that, again, have million dollar homes, but they're so far from God and they're so headed to hell. But they have nice houses <laughs> and they dress nice and they look attractive, but they're headed for hell. What am I saying, brothers and sisters? What am I saying? I'm saying that. Death comes from sin, brothers and sisters. I'm saying that people have to have a made up mind whether they're going to choose to live for God or live for the devil. It does not necessarily have to do with where they live because there's a lot of psychopaths in a suburban community. Huh? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of terrorists and Satanists so much in California. <laughs> Do you know that California was the, is the pornography capital of the world? California? What am I saying? I'm saying that just, be, and, and they have a high homeless population. Huge, huge homeless population. But yet, a couple of miles down is highly weird, or how how would I say, helly weird? There's so many people that are headed for hell in such lavish circumstances. So, does that necessarily mean that the environment makes them a sinner? Does living in a ghetto, does living in suburbia necessarily make you a sinner? Do you do you, do you understand what I'm? Okay, what I'm saying is this: there's so many people that. In the midst of adversity, diversity, and complexity, I like that, <laughs> has made their lives better through that adversity. They've overcome. And it has to do with not only their heart, not only with 
them wanting better or wanting more, but their mindset. They have to have a made up mind to in the midst of that adversity. And I'm telling you, this was going on in biblical times. Also, the same pattern. It may have not been a ghetto necessarily, but it was poor areas. People probably didn't wear shoes. huh? They didn't have the latest iPhones. They couldn't communicate with one another like we can. They didn't have internet and things of that nature. They didn't have TV. But yet they made decisions, brothers and sisters, to live for God, to live holy lives. But yet they monetarily were poor, brothers and sisters. What am I saying? I'm saying never let or be dis, how can I say, disillusioned, okay, by a person's status. I mean, look at the White House. Look at the upper echelon. Look at the elite. Do you think that they're mentally, morally, or spiritually sound? Or do you think there's a lot of sin going on? Think of the world itself and how God views the world. The world right now is a Sodom and Gomorrah, but yet God decided, God decided to deliver Lot, his daughters, and his wife. But the mindset of his wife and her deciding to look back, deciding to quote unquote backslide in a lot of ways is similar to what is going on in the world today. So the next time you feel that just because a person is in a downgraded, downtrodden, or complexed environment, never look down on them and thinking that they're sinners. They're all sinners. That's not necessarily true. Because the people with the fancy stuff, a lot of times, not all the time, And I'm not saying it's bad to live in a nice area. I've lived in nice areas and things, but there's cuckoo birds in the suburbs, too. (laughs) There's dope fiends in the suburbs, too. Can I keep it all the way real? There's psychopaths in the suburbs. Ooh, man, I won't leave that for the title. There's psychopaths in the suburbs. It's all about heart and mind and motives. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, brothers and sisters, with what you're given and what you have in your life? Bless the true and living God. Well, how did it work?